you to open your Bibles with me to Genesis 28, beginning at verse 18. We are in the series, The Dawn is Breaking. Just utter those words, The Dawn is Breaking. Say it with conviction. Don't just rehearse it. And we know that verse is from Genesis 32, 26, when Jacob ultimately wrestles with the angel of the Lord for the entire night season. And because he prevails with God, the angel says, let me go for the dawn is breaking. I am persuaded that the word for this year is that the dawn is breaking. We are on the verge of a whole new awakening to the power, the presence, the glory of Christ, the kingdom of Christ. You want to believe for breakthrough after 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 breakthrough. And so I want you to look at this journey towards the dawn is breaking and realize as we look at the story of Jacob and continue to look at it that there are all these previews of coming attractions, that there are small little dawns that lead to that ultimate dawn. And in Genesis 28 verse 18 it says, So Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put under his head, literally at the head place. Don't mistake what it says there in the English because it isn't quite what it means in the Hebrew. Some people uh, inaccurately claim Jacob laid his head on the stone, but in the Hebrew, the stone, this particular stone of all the stones that were there were, is the one that was laid at the head place. And he takes that head place stone and sets it up as a pillar and poured oil on its top. He called the name of that place Bethel. However, previously the name of the city had been Luz. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and keep me on this journey that I take and will give me food to eat and garments to wear and I return to my father's house in safety, then the Lord will be my God. This stone, which I have set up as a pillar, will be God's house. And all that you have given me, I will surely give a tenth to you. Then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the sons of the east. Now, one of the things you need to understand about the word if, both in the Greek and in the Hebrew, is that the word if is also translated since. If you read it as if, it sounds conditional. But this is actually a ratification on Jacob's part that he has entered into a covenant with the God of his father and the God of his grandfather. So it could also be read as since God will be with me and keep me and since all of those things, then God is my God and all the things that follow, including he's going to perpetuate the practice of the tithe. He heard it from grandpa. He learned it from daddy. It's something he's going to perpetuate. All right? And, 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 and when, when we, we get to this moment, you need to understand. Let me review by way of, of, of a couple of things I want to teach for a few minutes, and then I'm going to just go ahead and run with this thing, all right? Jacob was running away from his family when he has this encounter at what will become Bethel. Okay, he's running away from his family. He's running away from his past. And in running away from his past, he's trying to find his way to his future. A lot of us need to realize that more often than not, there are unconscious or conscious drivers that move us forward. They're not always the optimal motivational things. They're, you know, learning how to be motivated based on the future is more psychologically beneficial than trying to be motivated based on what you don't like in your past. Most people that are trying to avoid repeating their past never get to their future because their focus is still on their past. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? That you never want to frame where you're going based on avoiding where you've been. They've proven it medically and psychologically that if you try to set goals that are based on, I don't want to be like this, 
It's generally based on your family history or your personal history. And you have to understand that the moment you don't want to be like something because God created your mind and your spirit to be focused on an end, what you don't realize is you're not focusing now on where you want to be, you're focusing on where you've been instead of where you want to be, and you're going to actually repeat where you've been instead of get to where you're going. I don't want to be poor guarantees that even if you make money, you're going to lose it. And even if you do make money, you're going to hoard it and you're not going to enjoy it. Because you never want to build, we were built by God to be future present, not past present. God doesn't call those things that were as if they are. God calls those things that are not as if they are. And if you are going to come into agreement with God, saying the same thing as God, because the word confess means homo, is homologeo in the Greek, means to say the same thing as, you want to learn to speak the way God speaks. God calls those things that are not as though they are, because God declares the end from the beginning. Stay with me. Stay with me because we're talking about the law of faith here and, and how um, it, it is. But in Jacob running away from his past and running away from, him, from, from, from his family, he's actually trying to find himself. In Jacob running away from his past and running away from his family, he's trying to find himself. Rabbi Lawrence Kushner does a marvelous job on exegeting this particular portion of Scripture from a Hebraic perspective. And I want you to hear how it actually reads in Hebrew. When he says, when he wakes up and says, surely the Lord is in this place and I didn't know it. That's an English translation, but it's not quite what it says in the Hebrew. Here's what it says in the Hebrew. And then I've got to tell you how it looks grammatically uh, as spelled. God was in this place and I, comma, I did not know. It doesn't say God was in this place and I didn't know. It says God was in this place and I comma, I did not know. And here's how it reads. God was in this place and capital I, comma, small I did not know. Are you listening to me? God was in this place and capital I, comma, small I didn't know. Which means, in the Hebrew, the connotation is that Jacob only knew a part of who he was, which is why he missed being awake when God showed up. And so, when Jacob wakes up, when Jacob wakes up, he wakes up in what he thought when he went to sleep was a seemingly God-forsaken place that in actual fact when he woke up was a God-impregnated place. Some of you right now are experiencing a dark season. And it feels like, well, I know I'm on a fast, I'm in consecration, but it's a God-forsaken place. I need you to hear me. I'm prophesying to you. What you think is a dark, God-forsaken season is actually a God-impregnated place. And God is going to do for you what he says in Isaiah. He's going to give you the hidden treasures of the darkness. You need to hear me, and you need to hear me well. I'm prophesying to you that the dark season is the place where God has hidden your greatest treasures. And this is not a time for you to feel like God's not working. It's a time where you need to just relax and go to sleep. And let God do in this season what you can't do for yourself. God starts first, then you wake up and work with him. There was evening and morning the first day. In other words, God says, I start in the dark while you're asleep. And if you'll just stay asleep while I'm working, when you wake up, you'll get to see some stuff that you can work with me. 
But in the dark, Adam, I can do a great work. Well, well, well God, I don't feel complete. I know, I need to put you in the dark. Well, what do you mean? I, I need you to go to sleep. And while you're sleeping, I'm going to open you up. And I'm going to reach into the darkness inside you and bring something out of you that you didn't even know was there. I, I formed you, but I'm going to build something. Uh. See, Adam was formed. Eve was built. There's something God has formed in your life, but there's something in your dark season. He's opening you up to do surgery. He's about to build something out of something in you that you don't even know is a treasure hidden in your dark. Touch somebody and say, the dawn is about to break in my life. Tell somebody there's some hidden treasures inside me. And what I thought was a God-forsaken place is a God-impregnated place. And God's about to build something from a resource inside me that I didn't even know was there. I will wake up blessed. Somebody give Jesus a shout. Oh, you can do better than that. I want you to get excited. See, when God opens you, oh, <laughs> Paul says, when it pleased God to reveal his son in me, not his son to me. See, God revealed his son to the apostle Paul when he was Saul of Tarsus riding his high horse to Damascus and the bright light of the noonday sun got overshadowed by the brighter light of the effulgence of the glory of the second person of the Godhead. That's when God revealed his son to him. But later on in the journey, there comes a moment where God in a dark season in blind Saul's life reveals Christ in him. Some of you are coming to a breakthrough moment. You've given lip service to Christ in you, but God is about to open you up and reveal his son in you because all of creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. There are always two eyes. God was in this place and I did, I, and I did not know it. There's two eyes, the big eye and the little eye. And your little eye gets you in trouble. But there's a big eye in you. It is no longer I that live. But Christ, that's the I am, lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of not faith in, but the faith of the Son of God who loved little, old, broken, fractured, fragmented, don't know who I am, me. And gave himself for little, old, broken, fragmented, fractured, I don't know who I am, me. That I might become the righteousness of God in him. Are you breathing? And so, in this seemingly God-forsaken place, it looks like God is hiding. But the only reason it looks like God is hiding is because Little Jacob can't see him. He's there, but little I can't see him. There are some places you are facing and you need to understand it's not that he's hiding. It's that there's a part of you that can't see him. And what he's doing in this season is trying to bring you to a place where he gives you a song in the night so that when you wake up, David says in Psalm 17, I will be satisfied with thy likeness when I awake. I'm going to wake up looking like the real me. Touch somebody and saying, there's a wake-up call. 
on your agenda. God's put it on the calendar. Your dawn is about to break forth into a whole new day. Breakthrough after 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 breakthrough I prophesy after breakthrough 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 why because you're gonna take the mask off he had to mask himself because he couldn't be himself in his father's presence so even if you get the blessing you can't enjoy it because you can't receive it because you got it under terms that weren't based on your authentic identity when are you ever going to be good enough when is it ever going to be okay for you to be you And see, when it's not comfortable being in your own skin, you get preoccupied with yourself. You practice your presence instead of his until you wake up. Tell somebody the dawn is breaking. And so here's this, here's this moment <coughs> where <coughs> Jacob lays down and God says pay attention and all of a sudden there are angels ascending and descending and I've already talked about this he's been running from here to there and he now discovers kingdom order is not here to there, back and forth, back and forth. Kingdom order is ascending and descending. When you go here to there, you never get to the next level. Some of you keep oscillating back and forth between the fear of failure and the fear of success. And you're trying to get out of the box of your comfort zone. But your comfort zone is the distance between your fear of failure and fear of success. And the closer you get to the fear of failure, you redouble your efforts to go back and succeed. But when you get close to success, you're afraid you can't handle it. So you go back and you go towards the fear of failure and you oscillate back and forth. And that's where Jacob is because there's a little eye that doesn't know who he is. And he's trying to declare who he is, but he doesn't know who he is. And in the presence of God, God says, Jacob, it's time to stop. I need you to lay down on the ground you're running on. I need you to get grounded. God wants you to get grounded. Psychologically, you need to get close to the ground. That's why you're a human being, humus, the earth. The closer you get to grounding things, the more they'll manifest in your life. You want to bring things out of heaven into earth in your life, and that requires they get grounded. Well, you can't get to heaven going back and forth. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And if there's one thing the Holy Ghost will do is teach you how to ascend. So that you can go up to the throne of grace, receive mercy and help in time of need, and come back down and ground what you got from God by faith until it becomes sight. But you've got to be willing to rest in order for that to happen. Because your greatest victories come out of rest, not out of self-effort. Your little eye is going to work itself to the bone to try to get by effort what God gives by grace. Yeah. 
I need you to be reminded of the Sharona translation of grace. You ready? I mean, I've heard the theological, God's unmerited favor at Christ's expense. That's really great. Well, what does that really mean? I can't, so God has to. Say, grace, grace is, is, I can't, God has to. Now, that doesn't make me passive. It makes me actively surrendered so that he can do what he wants to do because I've given him permission and I walk by faith and not by my own works. Faith works, but not based on your little eye. Are you breathing? I'm going to preach in a minute. Just stay with me. And we already know he lays down in that place and God says, I need you to pay attention. There's another order I'm bringing you into and it's an order of Anna and Kata. John's gospel is all about ascending and descending. The word Anna and Kata, up and down, appear from John 1 to John 21 and it's the whole key to unlocking John's gospel. The ups and downs, the ascendings and the descendings. As a matter of fact, the ladder Jacob sees, John's gospel tells us Jesus is the ladder. And he says, you're going to see the angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Why? Because Jesus is the one who bridges the gap between where you're not and where the provision is in the Father. And he makes the two into one so that you can learn how to operate in kingdom order. Well, how do you get there? If you've been running to and fro and now you're laying down and you've got to ascend and descend, guess where you've been brought to? You've been brought to a... You've got to understand right there where your will and God's will meet. You've been going this way. God says you've got to go this way. You got to die to your little eye so that your big eye can access the treasures that are hidden in the dark. With every seed you sow, there's a harvest you grow. And God has a harvest in these last days of souls that he is wanting his people to sow into. And he will bless them for it and establish them in the covenant. I invite you to sow a love gift right now, a love seed into the soil of Mark Sharona Ministries for the sake of the harvest. Sow a $33 love gift right now. And let me put in your hands this powerful brand new series, The Dawn is Breaking. It will encourage, uplift, confirm, and establish you further in what God is doing in this season. Six messages, CD or DVD, your choice for your love gift of $33 or more. If you'll sow a love gift of $53 or more, I'm going to give you an additional companion series entitled, God is going to bless you no matter what. And that six series message is going to add to what you're hearing in the dawn is breaking. I promise you, it will indeed bless you. And for those of you that will sow a $73 love gift or more this month. I'm also going to include prophetic prayer cards with decrees from this entire emphasis on the dawn breaking that can direct your prayers, direct your declarations, and direct your confessions in a way that will establish further realms of faith and access to your heavenly blessing in Christ. Call that number now. Sow your best love gift, 33, 53, or 73, and let me put these resources and tools in your hands to empower and equip you to move further in the life Christ has for you.